TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Israeli leadership announced its decision to step up enforcement of restrictive regulations in the public sphere in light of an apparent resurgence of the corona contagion throughout the Jewish state. Reported division among Jerusalem's top political leadership is seemingly a cause for delays in Israel's anticipated bid to annex parts of the West Bank. A United Arab Emirates Etihad Airways aircraft landed in Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion International Airport last night transporting medical supplies earmarked to help the Palestinians combat the coronavirus. An evident resurgence of the corona contagion throughout the Jewish state continues to keep the Jerusalem leadership busy. While the upward trend of newly confirmed coronavirus cases has yet to reach the level that was seen in Israel during the so-called first wave of the contagion spread, Jerusalem's special Corona cabinet, which is tasked with combating the spread of the disease, is making every effort to steer the country's population from its complacent attitude vis-à-vis -vis its behavior, especially in the public sphere. Following an emergency meeting by senior Israeli officials in Jerusalem, which was chaired by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, it has been decided to empower enforcement authorities to assure the public's adherence to the government's corona-related measures that pertain to wearing masks, gatherings, standard for businesses and commercial centers, and enforcing quarantine for people that have been confirmed as carriers of the disease and persons with whom they have been in contact. Speaking at a state ceremony for the casualties of the Altalena affair, Prime Minister Netanyahu seized the opportunity to reiterate his call on the Israeli public to exercise mutual responsibility. He stressed that unless the public acts responsibly, Additional steps will be forced on the public sphere. Nevertheless, in contrast to the drastic measures undertaken by the government during the so-called first wave, which included a general nationwide closure, the Premier alluded to the fact that Jerusalem will continue to undertake extensive efforts to further open Israel's economy. <laughs> אחווה. ואנחנו עדיין זקוקים לערבות ההדדית הזאת, כי המגפה פה, והיא שוב מרימה את ראשה. היא מחייבת כל אחד מאיתנו להקפיד על ההנחיות של משרד הבריאות, כפי שאנחנו עושים כאן היום. וייתכן שבקרוב נצטרך לנקוט צעדים נוספים, ומקביל לצעדים שאנחנו עושים, לפתוח את הכלכלה, להחזיר אנשים למעגל העבודה, ולעזור לעצמאים. Premier Benjamin Netanyahu further highlighted the need for national unity as Jerusalem faces numerous challenges, including in all that pertains to its aspiration of asserting sovereignty over parts of the West Bank. The challenges that we have in our lives, in the health, in the health, in the health, in the corona, in the opening of the law of Israel on the land of the land of Judea and Shomron, the challenges that we have in our lives are united together the latest comment by Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu was apparently directed at alternate Premier and Defense Minister Benny Gantz. It has been revealed that a meeting was held between the two Israeli leaders on Sunday in the presence of U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman, Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi, and Parliament Speaker Yariv Levin. While limited information emerged from this meeting, it has been revealed that the United States is not the one hindering Israel's bid for annexation. A senior source explained to TV7 that the parameters of the American administration's position in all that pertains to the matter of annexation was made clear to Jerusalem from the moment President Donald Trump unveiled his so-called vision for peace, yet internal Israeli divisions are currently impeding the plan's execution. According to the source who has to remain anonymous, Netanyahu is eager to maximize the scope of the territory in question, whereas Gantz is determined to exercise a more cautious approach. The latter's apparent reluctance pertains to concerns over the consequences of Israeli annexation vis-à-vis -vis the strategically crucial relations with the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, which Israel's defense establishment vocally affirms to be vital for the national security interests of the Jewish state.
In light of these diplomatic concerns, Gantz is apparently pushing for partial annexation, which would probably include the application of Israeli law to the major Jewish settlement blocks in the biblical districts of Judea and Samaria, while stopping short from asserting sovereignty over the Jordan Valley. Neither the Israeli prime ministers nor the alternate premier's bureaus were willing to confirm nor deny the contents of this report. Turning now to the West Bank city of Ramallah, where Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shtaye warned Israel with dire consequences if the latter would unilaterally opt to assert its sovereignty over lands which the Palestinians demand for a future state. In remarks to the International Press Corps, the Palestinian leader highlighted the first priority of Ramallah in its efforts to combat the probable Israeli measure. This is our immediate target is not to allow Israel to annex. This is our immediate target between today and July 1st. All our efforts are focused on this particular point. Steyer went on to emphasize that any Israeli annexation would murder any possibility of peace and erode the Palestinian regional and international consensus for a two-state solution. Therefore, he highlighted the need for Israel to feel the heat of international pressure. What we hope is that Israel does not get away with murder. What we hope is that Israel should not continue to be above international law. What we hope is that, really, Israel should feel the heat of international pressure. While the Palestinian premier rejected the prospects of a violent reaction to Israel's anticipated measure, as chaos would consequently negate the Palestinians' legitimacy, Shtaye highlighted the need for the international community to respond to any Israeli annexation by recognizing a Palestinian state. We will not allow things to go into chaos under any circumstances, and therefore I think the international rejection of annexation and Israeli measures, the other side of the coin of this is a support for Palestine as well. Now in other news, the United Arab Emirates Etihad Airways aircraft landed in Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion International Airport last night, transporting medical supplies earmarked to help the Palestinians combat the coronavirus. According to the Israeli Foreign Ministry, which coordinated the plane's arrival with the Arabian Gulf Emirates, despite the fact that it does not have official diplomatic relations with the Jewish state, the aid was subsequently transferred to Gaza and the West Bank by assistance of the United Nations and a unit of Israel's Defense Ministry. In response to this flight, the Palestinian leadership voiced frustration over the fact that Abu Dhabi did not coordinate the shipment with Ramallah. And while a previous humanitarian shipment from the UAE was blatantly rejected by the Palestinian Authority over the lack of coordination and in protest of the Arab world's increased rapprochement with Israel, it is not clear yet whether the Palestinians would officially accept or reject the aid. In response, a senior Abu Dhabi official stressed that the UAE would not be deterred by Palestinian anger and said that the fight against the coronavirus had to take precedence over ideological differences of opinion. The official further admitted that the decision to have an aircraft from the United Arab Emirates land in Ben Gurion International Airport with its official logo emblazoned was a clear message to the Palestinians and the rest of the world. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's Global Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to pray for the salvation and peace of the people of Pakistan, alongside our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, Evan Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.